Hi guys! I'm super excited. The day has finally come. It's time to rack our mead. So, oh, sorry, no branding of my snooze there, but here is the bucket. Uh, I moved it up to the stool so it's a bit higher and then I let it sit for, what is it, like two hours now? So, sorry for my horrible camera work here. I hate using this camera, but you take what you have, right guys? Um, okay, so what we'll be doing now is we'll be adding spices as well. Since we will be dividing this big bucket onto five smaller flasks. So it will be five liters. I'll put it up in gallons here. <clears throat> and I'm sorry guys, I know I'm doing gallons US. If someone wants gallon UK, you guys can shove it. You use metric system, use liters, use centimeters. I, I, I can't be bothered with you guys. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that's my small rant for today. Okay, so we'll be <laughs> back to the subject at hand. Mead. Mead, guys. Mead. Odin. Okay, yeah. So, mead. Uh, we'll be racking this up to into five different bottles. And we'll be adding our spices here. So I'll show you what we add to the different bottles. Okay, here are the tastes we'll be doing. We'll be doing one which is just mead with an extra bit of sweetness. So we'll add a bit of honey and we'll be using the same honey as I used to use the must. But, so we'll do one that's just mead with no spices. And then we're gonna do one here. We're gonna do it with vanilla, cinnamon, clover, and just a bit of ordinary pepper. These are whole peppers just to give it some some spiciness. So we'll do one spicy one. And then we have the next one is we're gonna do with lingonberries, a very nice Nordic berry. And we're also gonna add this. This is a tea that I made out of uh, fir, um, what do you call it? Like fir tree needles. So it's two different kinds. I'll put them up in the screen, on the screen here and here which two different kinds is, because I can't remember what they're called in English at the moment. And then to that one we'll also be adding this. This is a special honey that I bought. It's made from wild um, raspberries. So I think that one's going to be good. 100% natural. So we're adding that one to it, because this tea is very, the tartness is very strong. So we're going to need some sweetness to balance it because the lingonberries, they aren't sweet at all. So, but I think we're gonna get a really nice taste out of that one. And then we're gonna make a one sour one. So here is just some squeezed lemons. So these are four lemons and three limes. And we're also gonna add some strawberries, frozen strawberries. It's winter here, so I can't get fresh berries except for one berry that I'll show you in a minute. Well, that one, but is our frozen strawberries, so we'll be adding those. And then the last one we'll make with uh, anise. Uh, it's called, I think it's called like anise in English as well. Um, if it's not, I'll put it up in the screen here. And, and then we have these, which I can't remember what they're called. Also very nice hardy winter berry. So these I've actually picked myself uh, when I was home for Christmas and I'll put the name of them in English here and we're gonna do one with this combination. It's gonna be really nice I think. Let's hope it is at least. So, so that's what we got so far and I'll update you guys when we do a taste test because I'm going to be opening this barrel now. It's been closed for 19 days. So we'll see if, if we have any meat or if it's just pure catastrophe, but we'll find out. Okay guys, see you in a bit. Okay guys, I racked just a little bit so we can get a sneak taste. See how this is. As you can see, the clarity is non-existent at the moment, but the clarity comes with, with aging, so we're not expecting to see a lot of clarity now. 
and this is what you can see in the actual bucket. As you see there's a lot of dead yeast on top and I'm betting the bottom is even worse. So that's that's what we're gonna try to get away from. So okay, let's <laughs> I can't wait anymore, let's do a taste test. Mm, smells like mead. Oh, that's really good. The sweetness is totally gone. There's virtually no sweetness left, which is nice because that's what we were going for. Since we will be adding sweetness to some of them, we wanted something that wasn't sweet at all. So, so far this is perfect. And oh my god, it tastes so strong. Mm. Oh, I could drink this as is. It was wonderful. Okay. Now I'm gonna do the alcohol test, see how much alcohol actually in it. It feels like it's like 25%, it won't be. It would be a maximum of 15, I'm guessing 14. So, okay, so I've been running some tests here trying to figure out the alcohol content of it. And I, I'm guessing you can't see this, but I'll be using this and, well, you can't see the line even. But I've run the test three times now and every time it goes past the 15% mark and as I understand it shouldn't be possible because my yeast is only made to eat up to 15 so we'll say 15. I was guessing 14 but it looks like we actually got 15 which was the maximum we could get out of this yeast so I don't know, no, I don't know how exact this instrument is so but say, let's say 15 roughly so now we're gonna start adding things to bottles and I'll show you the bottles once I've added the different spices and stuff to it and then we'll start the process of racking so nice okay sadly guys I was getting ahead of myself and um, I realized I have this like fancy pansy mead pack that I bought with um, firstly stabilizers which we're gonna add now and then I have this this is a finer yeah, so it's finding A and B and what you need to do is you need to add the first and then you stir gently and then you leave it for an hour. Then you add a second one, stir gently and then you leave it for 24 hours. Which means that we won't be starting the racking process until tomorrow. Ah, which makes me sad because I was super hyped about this and I prepared everything and stuff but none of this will take any damage for sitting, from sitting for 24 hours so it's fine. But I'm still gonna steal a bottle, just a small bottle, so I can drink until tomorrow. <laughs> okay guys, um, so all I'll be adding now is I'll be adding the wine stabilizer and this is add directly to the wine after fermentation is complete. And it's supposed to help stabilize it. And then we have the finisher, which as I understand is supposed to kill the yeast, make sure it's not eating anything else and it will also help in clarifying it so it will be uh, much clearer it will push all the yeast to the bottom and the top as I understand it that's the way it's supposed to work and then I also have this uh, citric acid that I got in the pack as well I don't think I will be using this because as I understand it you put this into to counteract the sweetness of the honey but my mead has no sweetness left. If I did it with more honey, yeah, there would be a lot of extra sweetness there, but I did this intentionally to get it as sour and as little sweetness in it as possible. So I added just enough sugar, well, honey, so that the yeast would be able to eat it up. So I don't think I will be using the citric acid. Either way, you supposed to add it after the first racking process so we'll see if we need to add it to any of the, the other ones but we can counter with it if we get one that's a bit too sweet and we lose that like whiny acidy taste so i i know we won't be needing it in the one we're actually adding lemon in because we'll also be adding the peel and what i've done is i took um what do you call it, a potato peeler, and I peeled off just the top layer of skin from both the lemons and the limes, so you get the colored part, but not that, you know, white thing before the flesh. 
um, and we're gonna add that as well to to that one the one the sour one so sorry guys but um, I'll be adding these things now and then I will be doing this tomorrow but I'll be filming it then and you can see how it turns out <laughs> 